this moment. Um, it's easy to talk about the symbolism, how do we get to the substance? It's easy to talk about the personality, how do we get to the policy? Um, we, we have got to recognize this moment for what it is, an opportunity to radically rewrite the promise of America. I said in a speech the other day that the real problem with America, even now with the black man in the White House, is that America is still not yet a nation that's as good as its promise. There's a gap between the promise of America and the possibility in America for every single one of us. And this is a moment where I think we can do something significantly, significantly that is, to shrink the gap between the promise and the possibility, but only if we are willing as, as Americans to recognize that that means every one of us taking a stand on the issues that matter to us. Yes, ma'am. I thought your movie was really good. It was really brilliantly put together. Two points on it. Number one, um, I love your note on Frederick Douglass. Right. Uh, tying Frederick Douglass to the time of King and where it is today. I would love you to talk a little bit more about that. Uh, being with hip-hop Republicans, mm -hmm. uh, there are black Republicans who did not vote for Barack Obama and do not support his policies. It had nothing to do with him being a black man or a good man or a man of ethics. They just don't believe in his policies. Um, uh, I would love for you to share on that. Last thing also, I love the part of the movie that you uh, interacted Dick Gregory mm -hmm. in sharing black history and how church tied with today's times. Um, how we just only got our history through the church. That's so prevalent because so many people don't go to church and so many generation people in their 40s who got tied to church didn't understand the ethics of mm -hmm. the purpose of church. Three things. Let me, let, me take, let me take them in the order if I can recall them. Remember the order you, you gave me. First on Frederick Douglass. Um, Frederick Douglass is the ultimate, he is the quintessential freedom fighter in this country. Um, certainly where the African American experience is concerned, I'd put him up against anybody else as, as an authentic American hero, an authentic freedom fighter. Um, and so the point I tried to make earlier is that there is no Abraham Lincoln if there is no Frederick Douglass. Um, I have an art exhibit uh, called America I Am that's traveling the country right now. Um, and it premiered in Philadelphia in January, it's opening in Atlanta on June the 11th. Um, it is the, the most, um, it's, it's the biggest, baddest, boldest exhibit ever that tells the contributions of black folk to this country. It's a 15,000 square foot exhibit, um, uh, 12 galleries, four theaters, over 300 artifacts that tell the story of the African American contribution to America from the moment the slaves arrived at Jamestown in 1619 up through and including the election of Barack Obama. And there are 300 items in this exhibit, some items given by President Obama to be a part of this exhibit himself. Again, we friends, whether people want to believe that or not. Uh, he gave items to be in the exhibit um, from the campaign. But um, it, it's, it's a massive exhibit, and in the exhibit, there's some powerful Frederick Douglass um, memorabilia and paraphernalia. Uh, and there's a letter. Um, first of all, we have, we have the emancipation signed by Lincoln that's in the exhibit. Uh, and we place it in the, exhibit, in the exhibit next to Frederick Douglass's personal artifacts, his clothes and other items. There's a letter in this exhibit that Lincoln writes on behalf of Douglas. And what he's basically saying, even though Frederick Douglas was a free, this blew me away, even though Douglas was a free man, we have a letter signed by, written and signed by Abraham Lincoln while he was president. And the letter basically says, Frederick Douglas is a good man. And uh, if you should have an encounter with him, please, and these are the words I'm quoting now, please allow him to pass unmolested. That's a quote. Please allow him to pass unmolested unmolested. So here's a free man who still has to have a letter from his friend the president that he keeps in his pocket everywhere he goes so that white folk won't jack him up even though he's Frederick Douglass. Douglass is the guy that Lincoln is consulting about his inauguration speech. Douglass is the guy he's consulting about how to handle the Civil War. I mean it's, 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 it's amazing to actually see this letter signed by Abraham Lincoln. It underscores the point that I tried to make earlier that Lincoln becomes a great president because Douglas, in love for the president, is willing to hold him accountable um, to the best interest of black people and the Union. Uh, and that's all I was saying about Barack Obama, that somebody's got to be willing to be the Frederick Douglass if we're going to help this brother become a great president, number one. To your second question um, about black Republicans, you know, I'm not a black Republican. Uh, I think anybody knows my work knows that. I'm glad you're here, but I'm not a black Republican. <laughs> Uh, and I think that's, that's pretty obvious. I do believe, though, that, that, um, that we have to allow people to have their own points of views. Uh, we, have to have, we have to allow people to have their own public policy positions. And I don't believe that just because somebody is black means that they are entitled to the support of every black person 
just because they're bad. They got to prove themselves, and people have the right to come down on their issues wherever they want to come down. Uh, I happen to believe that for the most part, that President Obama um, is on the right track. I happen to believe, and John McCain is a personal friend of mine. I happen to believe that Obama ran a better campaign, was a better candidate than John McCain. I understand why very clearly he beat uh, John McCain, but I don't. Uh, believe in name calling or denying people an opportunity to express themselves in their own way politically, socially, culturally, or otherwise. Finally, to your point about Gregory and the Black Church, um, one of the most profound scenes in the movie for me, I, I was just, um, I, 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 I know Dick, and I didn't know how exactly how many years it had been, but I knew that it had been a while since Dick had worshipped in a church on Sunday. And I could tell, sitting next to Dick in church, um, that he was a little uncomfortable, you know, in, in those settings. Uh, but when we walked into Mason Temple and that scene just, as I said, it was an otherworldly experience to see Dick just open up in that way. It just again speaks to me about the profundity, the profundity of the black church. That once you put that in us, once you put that in people, an abiding faith in something bigger and greater than they are, it stays there whether or not they go to church every Sunday or not. So this movie couldn't have been done without connecting to the black church and I'm glad that, uh, that Dick was able to join us on the trip. Thank you. All right. Um, any more? Anybody? Last one? Yes, ma'am. Uh, the movie was, was great. I love the fact, um, like the gentleman said, 